Now let's talk about 60 degree angles in the top half of the coordinate plane. These are also often used angles. We find that 30, 45, and 60 are commonly used angles in trigonometry. The top half of the plane is 180 degrees total. So we would split that into three equal pieces to get 60 degree angles out of that. If we mark that out in degrees, we would have zero degrees, 60 degrees, 120 degrees, and 180 degrees. We can keep counting below the axis. So past 180 degrees, we would have 240 degrees, then 300 degrees, and then back to 360 degrees. Now let's mark that out in radians. So zero radians. And then since these 60 degree angles are splitting the top plane into thirds, the next one would be one third pi, then two thirds pi, then three thirds pi. Going to the bottom half, we'd have four thirds pi, five thirds pi, and six thirds pi. Let's simplify where we can, or just rewrite with the pi in the numerator. So this first one, instead of one third pi, we'd write that as pi over three, then two pi over three, three pi over three is just pi, four pi over three, five pi over three, and then six thirds pi is the same thing as two pi. So now we have coordinated the degrees measurement and the radians measurement. Zero degrees is the same thing as zero radians. 60 degrees is the same thing as pi over three radians. 120 degrees is the same thing as two pi over three radians. 180 degrees is the same thing as pi radians. 240 degrees is the same thing as four pi over three radians. And 300 degrees is the same thing as five pi over three radians. Of course, when we get back to 360 degrees, we are at that measurement of two pi radians. Again, we can practice marking these out on a horizontal axis. So on an axis that's scaled up to 360 degrees with 180 degrees in the middle, we want to consider marking those into thirds. So let's mark thirds between zero and 180 degrees. That gives us values of 60 degrees for the first third and 120 degrees for the second third. We can mark thirds between 180 degrees and 360 degrees, which would give us 240 degrees and 300 degrees. Now let's do it for radians. We have a horizontal axis marked from zero to two pi with a pi in the middle. Again, we're gonna break it into thirds. And so the first third is at pi over three. The second third is at two pi over three. Then we get to pi, which is three pi over three. Break the next part into thirds. So after three pi over three, we'd have four pi over three and five pi over three. Six pi over three would correspond to two pi. That's actually a little easier to count than the 45 degree ones. That's actually a little easier to count than the 45 degree ones since we aren't reducing at every 90 degree. You might find that's actually a little easier to count off than the radian angles that correspond with 45 degrees. So finally, let's look at the 30 degree angles in the top half of the coordinate plane. Now we're taking 180 degrees and we need to break that up into 30 degrees, which means we need to divide that top plane into six equal slices, each of 30 degrees. So counting in degrees, we'd start with zero degrees, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, 120 degrees, 150 degrees, and 180 degrees. Continuing to the bottom half of the coordinate plane from 180 degrees, we would have 210 degrees, 240 degrees, 270 degrees, 300 degrees, 330 degrees, and 360 degrees when we get all the way back to the x-axis. So that's what marks out degrees going by 60 degree increments. Now let's look at radians going by 60 degree increments. So we'll still have zero radians. And then we've broken up the distance between zero and pi into six. So we're gonna count by sixths. So we're just gonna start by writing one sixth pi, two sixths pi, three sixths pi, four sixths pi, five sixths pi, six sixths pi, which of course is equal to pi. And then moving down from six sixths pi, we would do seven sixths pi, eight sixths pi, nine sixths pi, 10 sixths pi, 11 sixths pi, and 12 sixths pi. 
Now, many of those have fractions that can simplify and others don't, but either way, we can always write these with a pi in the numerator. So let's go ahead and rewrite all of these angles and see where we land. 1 6th pi can be rewritten as pi over 6. So 30 degrees corresponds to pi over 6. 2 6th pi can be simplified to be 1 3rd pi or pi over 3. 3 6 pi can be simplified to 1 half pi or pi over 2. 4 6 pi can be simplified to be 2 thirds pi or 2 pi over 3. 5 6 pi can be rewritten as 5 pi over 6. 6 6 pi, of course, was pi. 7 6 pi could be rewritten 7 pi over 6. 8 6 pi could be rewritten as 4 thirds pi or 4 pi over 3. 9 6 pi is the same thing as 3 halves pi, and that's 3 pi over 2. 10 6 pi is the same thing as 5 thirds pi, or 5 pi over 3. 11 6 pi can be written as 11 pi over 6. And then 12 6 pi, of course, can be rewritten as 2 pi. Now I want you to notice the denominators of these radians measurements as we move around the circle. I'm going to start by highlighting the ones with a denominator of 6. So pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. All of these have an angle to the x-axis of 30 degrees. And I'm going to mark that in here so you can see it. So an angle to the x-axis of 30 degrees. We call this a reference angle. So all of those have a reference angle of 30 degrees, and they all have a denominator of 6 once they're simplified. Then moving on to the denominators of 3, we have pi over 3, we have 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. All of these have a reference angle to the x-axis of 60 degrees. Pi over 3 has a reference angle of 60 degrees. 2 pi over 3 has a reference angle of 60 degrees. 4 pi over 3 has a reference angle of 60 degrees. And 5 pi over 3 has a reference angle of 60 degrees. And all of those have denominators of 3. Finally, we can look at the denominators of 2, so pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And you can see that those are both the axes values. Those are both reference angles of 90 degrees to the x-axis. This can be a convenient way to actually plot your angles, as long as you know what quadrant they're in and what the denominator is of the simplified fraction, you can place the angle pretty easily. Now let's just practice writing those on a horizontal axis. So first we have the axis scaled from 0 to 360 degrees. In the middle we have 180 degrees. I'm going to mark off the centers of those, so 90 degrees and 270 degrees, falling exactly between 180 and 360. And then in each of those four regions we would have two more angles marked equally apart. So in the first region, we'd have 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Between 90 and 180, we'd have 120 degrees and 150 degrees. Between 180 and 270, we'd have 210 and 240. And between 270 and 360, we'd have 300 and 330. Okay, so now let's do that same scale in radians. So now we have a horizontal axis going out to 2 pi with pi exactly in the middle. Again, we can mark the halfway points of those. So halfway between 0 and pi is pi over 2. And halfway between pi and 2 pi is 3 pi over 2. Then we can imagine counting up, simplifying our fractions as we go. Let's count up by sixths. So our first sixth is pi over 6. That's a third of the way to pi over 2. Next, we'd have 2 pi over 6, which simplifies to be pi over 3. Then 3 pi over 6, which is that pi over 2 point. 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. 5 pi over 6, which doesn't simplify. 6 pi over 6, which is pi. 7 pi over 6. 8 pi over 6, which we can rewrite as 4 pi over 3. Then we're at 3 pi over 2, which is the same thing as 9 pi over 6. Then we have 10 pi over 6, which is the same thing as 5 pi over 3 then 11 pi over 6, and then finally 12 pi over 6, which is 2 pi. So reading across between 0 and 2 pi, counting at equal intervals, we have pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, pi, 7 pi over 6, 4 pi over 3, 3 pi over 2, 
5 pi over 3, 11 pi over 6, and 2 pi. Now, if you find that to be kind of difficult to mark out, consider that there's nothing stopping you from writing the non-reduced fractions. So we could make an alternate scale for this that looks like 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, etc. And you can always make both scales if you'd like, both the scale that's not reduced and the scale that is reduced.